Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are back again with the Airbus H135 project. This thing is just getting better and better and better just like it says in the description. Um, I cannot uh, believe how fast this thing is updating. It's just absolutely going miles and miles. Um, so today we're going to give it another shot. My understanding is there's been quite a few advancements to the sound, uh, startup procedure, startup sound. Well, not startup procedure, but startup sound, um, as well as in a big increase to the advanced flight model, which I choose to use, which I'm sure many of you do as well, um, as I don't want things to necessarily be too easy. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what this latest update has to offer. Once we get up and moving, I'm also going to be talking about some channel updates, some updates to documentation that I've uh, been creating and things that are going to be coming our way. Um, so uh, stay tuned for that. All right. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right. So stepping into the aircraft, first thing we'll do is get the doors closed here. Now, one of the other things that's changed is uh, looks like they're working on some of the cockpit textures. Things are getting a little bit brighter and shinier. Obviously, some of that needs to be adjusted. Some of the reflections are a little too strong, giving it that uh, sort of that fake look. But uh, again, what I'm what I'm liking is there's changes. Changes means improvement. It means things are being worked on. It means things are being focused on. That's excellent. Um, you can see it also starts in a cold and dark state, which before it would start with electrical power on. So we're just going to do that. Flip the batteries on there. Set our terrain mode. Oh, uh oh, did they take it? Did they get rid of that? Oh, there it goes. Okay. I really liked that. And we are in the advanced flight model. I'm not going to worry about a flight plan or anything like that today. We can click on external power now. We can turn on some uh, lights here. Oh, hey, that actually illuminates the ground. Cool. We can adjust our brightness. Of the displays now. We turn our pitot heat on. Very cool. So what's nice about this, I know it's probably not realistic to many, but it's it's giving us options. So what I like about what they're doing with these soft keys is they're not limiting us, right? They're, they're, they're putting something in place where we still get the functionality, maybe not the way it's meant to be or, or designed to be, but they're at least providing the functionality until they can design it as they would like right i mean i really like the, the attempt here and and the features and the quality of life and character or creature comforts if you will that they're adding to this aircraft so it's pretty awesome um i'm not sure what the correct startup is here for so i'm just going to throw gen 1 and gen 2 on i'm also going to cycle all i did was tap my throttle and collective to make sure that they're in the right position the sound is new. The rotor now doesn't just boom all of a sudden it's on. It's actually accelerating. Which I like. I'm increasing the throttle. And he did say the sound is a work in progress. Let's turn the fade deck on. See how she sounds outside. Nice, and you can hear it speeding up there. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, I know why we're on the wrong controls. Ooh, fail. That was nothing they did wrong. It's my profile. Yep. They didn't do anything wrong. That was all on me. I have a specific profile for the Hilo. There we go. That was my fault. All right, and she's down again. Okay, cool. Whoops. I like that sound, though. That's good sound. All right, so let's go ahead. And one of the other things that they mentioned that were adjusted was the transition of lift. So we're going to see if we get a massive improvement here, if it's more comfortable to fly. Give me just a second here, I gotta move. Uh, my flight stick there. It wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. There we go. All right, so let's just go tool around a little bit and then we'll chat for a bit. So here we go, adding some collective. I'm gonna add left uh, rotor, just a, or tail rotor. 
Oh, okay. Nice. It doesn't just pop off like it did before. Very nice. Watch the building. Try and just get a little float above the ground going here. Without smacking it into a building, that would be good. There we go. Nope. So, yeah, this is a really awesome flight model. I mean, the, the movements that it's making, it, it's my fault. It's, it's what I'm doing on the cyclic. So, you know, I can't... And it looks like they've adjusted the left uh, tail rotor input required. I still have to put in a lot, which makes sense to me, especially at these low speeds and then still, you know, sticking within ground effect here, which, by the way, we probably don't want to hit this airplane here. So, by the way, what a weird spot for an airplane. And let's just get up and over it. That airplane's missing a canopy. Oh, maybe not. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm all over the place. So this is challenging. It's, it's very challenging. I know we uh, broke about 9,000 rules there, but that's all right. This is our world. I didn't add any collective to get it to start lifting like that. As soon as it started accelerating, she started picking up. So it just used the ground effect to get up and moving. By the way, we're out at uh, Princess Juliana. Really pretty area. And now I'm almost completely off the tail rotor. I'm just using it more or less for coordination. This is beautiful. Well done. Well done. They've really really come a long way just since the last release and I feel like that was just a few days ago and I guess that's the other thing that I'm really happy to see is how quickly the updates are coming I mean these guys are drilling into this thing man every time I get it there's there's new features that you know as well as updates to existing features I still have to try this thing out in VR I haven't done that yet How would you like to live there? Look at that scenery every day. What is that? Is that a tree in the middle of the water? It sure is. Alright, so while we're around here tooling around, just for a second. Um, a couple of new things coming to the channel here. I've been looking at the um, DH8 Q400 and the, what is it, ATR72 uh, turboprops. I'm going to be taking a look at those here soon. Um, I know there's some, they're both FSX imports, and I believe from what I've seen so far, um, one of them's got a few more issues than the other. One of them seems pretty good, so we're going to be testing those out uh, just to see if it's, if it's worth adding to your arsenal, um, and that's no discredit to any of the uh, developers, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not a developer, so I, I try to do it just with a an equal uh, bias opinion. You know, I have nothing against either aircraft, so, you know, and I've never flown anything like them, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always in the airliners when I think commercial. Um, so, anyway, we'll be testing that out. We got some more flights with the uh, new CRJ 750 coming down the road here. Been doing a little bit of flight planning this morning to come up with some neat ideas. Looking for cool places to fly uh, that might be a bit challenge challenging. I want to start looking at some of the more challenging approaches. Um, as far as the guides go, we got the TBM 930 guide and the A320 guide that are looking at a couple of updates coming hopefully by the end of the week. Um, as well as I have begun to work with the Cessna Citation. Um, I'm in the process of learning it. That's why there's been a day or two in between videos lately. Um, 
The features aren't quite as available as they are in the other aircraft as far as cockpit functionality and things like that. So I'm, I'm doing my best to sort of figure out a way to keep it simple while as realistic as possible as far as the guide goes. And then leave room for future mod development. I'm sure, you know, at some point, just like anything else, somebody's going to pick that thing up and start adding cockpit features and whatnot to it. So um, we're just going to have to play that by ear and see what happens. But... Uh, that guide has begun. I have already created the first couple pages. Now, that's nothing to write home about, but letting you guys know that it uh, it is in progress. Um, somebody had mentioned the CJ4 as a guide. I will not be doing a guide on the CJ4. And the reason being is um, Working Title has already done an amazing job. I, I am, you know, I, I, their guide is already uh, pretty on point. Um... I mean, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what the, th the future brings. But I, I don't feel like it's necessary after reading through their guide. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what the future brings. Who knows? One, ironically enough, as I say that, that I may be working on is the CRJ, as I learned it. And the reason being is the guide that came with it is pretty good. Um, but there's a lot of really confusing points to it, at least from my standpoint. They have, they have pictures of some things and then not of other, while steps to the images are in between and I, I guess my thing is is when you do a guide like that that has you know uh, uh, picture illumination there right, if you will um, or pictorial demonstrations um, you, you can't you can't pick and choose what parts of the steps that you um, put in a picture I mean if you're gonna do pictures then what you're doing is you're, is in my opinion you're setting the readers mind up for a picture to each step and I just didn't see that. Um, and I think if, and even as cool as the pictures are to it, you got to have a cockpit tour in it. You got to let people know what they're looking for and where to look to hopefully find some of those things. So uh, the guide is still, it, it's still great. And I am not, please don't take this as me um, uh, being disrespectful to the developers of, at Aerosoft. I'm not trying to do that at all. And I hope no one takes it that way. Um, it's still a great leap into uh, better documentation for some of these aircraft. Um, a lot of the aircraft, when you purchase them, the documentation is very lacking. Or, I guess a better way to say it is, they're written for people who know what they're reading. And I think one of the benefits to flight simulation, and one of the important aspects, is the documentation. And that's why I dumped so many hours into this, is because a lot of people who are getting into flight simulation are people who don't know about the aircraft. They don't understand how it works. Maybe they're still learning the terminology and things like that. And, you know, it was, it was a lot of the same uh, learning curve in DCS world uh, that made it difficult for me when I first got into DCS was, you know, there was so much of just the nomenclature and, you know, the abbreviations, things like that, that you don't understand when you're first getting into it. And it can really be a turnoff to such an amazing hobby. Um, and so that, that's why I do these guides. And, you know, I've, I've caught criticism for charging for them and everything like that. It's like, my thing is like, <laughs> you know, I've got, what, essentially four guides out. The TBM 930 guide I still consider counts as two. It's a, it's a G3000 guide and the TBM 930 guide. Um, that guide alone was almost 100 hours of work, you know. And then, you know, I mean, I have a family and everything like that too. So to the people who get upset about me charging, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, I... I, I I don't think I'm going to be changing that anytime soon. Um, and I will say that if you guys are interested in any of my guides, you know, I have the A320 guide, a G1000 guide, the TBM 930 guide, which doubles up as the G3000 guide. Um, the best way to get them is just to subscribe to Patreon, um, especially with the updates. Um, it's $10 a month or more, um, but uh, 10 bucks a month, and you have access to all the guides that I put out and all the updates. And I mean, as long as you save your links, you know, you get the updates anyway. You know, I, I don't keep the updates from people. It's, it's a one-time purchase thing if you donate. I, I don't I don't make anyone donate again. You know, that's that's not what I'm trying to do. You know, you purchase the product, you purchase the product. But uh, anyway, so um, just wanted to throw a little channel news out there and let you guys know where I'm at. All right, so with channel news out of the way, I hope you guys have seen the way this thing has been flying. Uh, it's absolutely a joy. Um, it's smooth, it's fun, um, it's really getting quite fantastic. Uh, the collective is very responsive in the aspect that when I pull it off, she descends. When I add, she, you know, uh, ascends. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and check out a landing in it. 
Now, this is something I am still very much getting used to, so easy on the judgments. Man, get down that ground effect and she just floats all over the place. Ah, oh, man, I thought I was going to do alright on that one. <laughs> I really thought I was going to do better. So I would have liked to have heard the prop speed down when I take the propeller off, but that's alright. Oops, I never turned that external power off. Um, but that's alright. Uh, again, these are things that are... Parking brake, really? Um, these are things that are going to be adjusted in time. Um, I am really, really enjoying this. I'm really impressed with the efforts that's being made by the developers. And uh, I'm going to continue to follow this one very closely and continue to update as you know good updates come to it. The flight model in advanced mode has changed dramatically just since the last time I flew it. Um, if you guys are on the fence about this aircraft or are worried about, well, I don't want to fly because of the textures... It's a freeware, guys. Trust me. Give it a shot. Once you get up and flying, you forget about the textures. You really do. You know that's the nice thing about a helicopter or the low-level flying aircraft is once you get up moving, you're looking at the scenery, you're you're feeling the aircraft. You, you really stop paying attention to the textures after a minute, and you just start paying attention to the way it flies. And it's really, really come a long way. I'm really very impressed with this. And again, my hats off to the developers. They're doing just fantastic work. Um, so with that in mind, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care, folks.